Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Monster Movie Night. I am your internet horror host and creepy old curator of Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, hosting Monster Movie Night, along with my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> welcome to our humble home. Be it ever so horrible, there's no place like home. Right, Boris? <laughs> and speaking of home... <laughs> home of the Egyptians, the pharaohs, the mummies. Oh, there's so many, many movies out there. Of course, the very first one with Mr. Karloff himself, <laughs> as you can see the poster back here. Uh, of course, tonight film we can't show Mr. Karloff's The Mummy for uh, copyright reasons and universal laws and things like that enough said mm. but we can and did find a little ditty that's called The Pharaoh's Curse it's 1957 and it's uh, somewhat of a I guess a low budget um, Curse of the Mummy or the Mummy's Curse <laughs> well it's got mummies and it's got beautiful women that's uh, cat-like, uh, say a, a, um, a, a worshiper of uh, Bast, uh, Bastet, that's right, the little kitty cat here, just like the little statue of Bass or Bastet, who is the guardian of the gateways and uh, also magic. But anyway, we'll get into more of that later. So let's get started straight into it right now to the Pharaoh's Curse. Posted sentinels around you and turned in. It seemed like hours later. Well, maybe it was only minutes. Without sound, without warning, nothing. And then suddenly they were all around us, among us. We couldn't tell them from our own. They butchered us proper, they did. Everything you touched was wet with blood. They cut Johnny's tongue out. Made him watch while they fed it to the animals. They'd have done the same for me or worse if I hadn't gotten myself buried beneath a dead body. I'd think this was the Dark ages instead of 1902. Are you all right, sir? Yes. You're going to be all right, sir. Please. See that these men get to hospital right away. Yes, sir. If I may suggest, sir, I should turn your lamp down. Thank you. Captain, 
Sergeant Storm reporting, sir. Get him in here. So? Sit down, Storm. It's not explosive enough around here for them. Patrols being wiped out, native uprisings against the Crown. Now, now the Home Office cables were to go out after an archaeological expedition. Tombs? Tombs. But I don't understand, sir. There have been other diggings. Mm, this one went out there without Egyptian approval. Just let that mob out there get the idea for one minute we're digging up their ancient king's graves, tampering with their religious beliefs, their superstitions, and the fanatics that started this riot would soon spread it into a national situation. All they want is a chance to throw us out and bury British rule. You leave for the Valley of the Kings before dawn tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Intelligence has routed you the long way round the pass. Of course, you'll lose time, but... Since we've only had a garrison wiped out and lost every patrol in that area, that's very considerate of them, sir. You'll be given two men. Two men? That's all we can spare. Here are the names of the members of the party and all the other information you'll be needing. Oh, yes. There's one other thing. There'll be another person going with you. A Mrs. Robert Quentin, wife of the leader of this jolly Anglo-American expedition. She's just arrived from the States to join her dear husband. Are there any other questions, Captain? Wouldn't it be safer, sir, if Mrs. Quentin stayed in Cairo? No, if she stayed here, word would get out about the expedition, then we'd be in real trouble. Anything else? No, sir. Good luck, then. Thank you, sir. You couldn't have all the comforts of home, Mrs. Quentin. But I'm a desert and animal gets first consideration. Captain, please don't concern yourself about me. But treat me the same as one of your men. I'm afraid that might be a bit difficult. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot for a moment. The renowned Mrs. Robert Quentin. I've seen pictures of you and your husband on safaris. The great American adventures. Quite a team. Big game hunting, scaling snow peaked mountains. Say nothing of the jungles, the unexplored Amazon, having been captured by pygmies. Head shrinking species of that. I must say, it uh, doesn't show a bit. There, that's lots better. The duty I draw. Egypt! They couldn't let me stay nice and peaceful like at Weatherly Green. Drawing my pay and training all the old geezers in the home guard. Good for you. Clean out to all life. Oh, very funny. What makes you so delirious with your lot? You haven't met my wife. Uh, well, she'll have you back soon enough when your hitch is up. That's what she thinks. I'm trading in my uniform for the Foreign Legion. All right, let's mount up. How many nights do I have to keep on telling you the same thing? First, you get the rocks out from all the sensitive places, see? Like this. There's another. And you smooth it all out, see? Make a nice pillow for a lovely head. 
I don't care how you fix your bed, but you're making this for a lady, not your wife. Now, lay down there and try it. Ah, you could dream beautiful dreams sleeping here, you could. Now, why'd you have to go and mention my wife? What kind of a man is your husband? What? I said, wasn't important anyway. You certainly weren't here a moment ago. Where were you? I don't know. Everywhere. Nowhere. Mostly alone, I guess. Why? That's no way for a woman like you to be. What way should a woman like me be? I'd love to give you the wrong answer. You forget. Did you have a husband? No, I didn't forget. Are you happy? Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. For some reason, I just don't picture you in this wild, adventurous role. Maybe I like it. Maybe I like the excitement, the adventure. I think you're trying to talk yourself into it. You know, you fascinate me, Captain. That's the nicest thing you've said the whole trip. I take back everything I thought about you. Well, how would you like to look at yourself close up? Oh, I'm sure that you've been told you're charming, you're handsome, you have quite a way with the women. Any particular one you're running away from? The one who didn't think I was charming, handsome. Or I had quite a way. Very foolish girl. No, oh, maybe I was lucky. How about a truce? Let the mummies lie in their tombs, hmm? What is it? Could be anything. Get over there. Keep low. Keep me covered. That's far enough. There's not anyone there. I'm alone. Who are you? Where have you come from? I am Simira. I come from out there, the desert. Are you lost? No, I'm not lost. How did you get here? The light of your fire. You've been traveling across the desert on foot. You may tell your men there's no need for guns. I have told you. I come alone. A mirage in the middle of the blinking desert. Your food and water. Can't we get you something to eat? To drink? All right, just what are you doing here? I come from my village at Mokotan Mountains. It's hundreds of miles. I go to find my brother Numa. He has left our village. I cannot count the days. He has gone with those who seek the tomb of King Rahateb. How do you know this? Numo is with him. I know it. But you must hurry before it is too late. Too late for what? Please, you go the long way. Let me lead you. If you want to look for your brother, you're welcome to come with us. But we go our way. What do you suppose she meant? What if she does know a shorter way? You know all about that short way. A quick route to the sharp end of a spit over a hot fire. All right, everybody, turn in. We we'll rotate guard every two hours. Up. I'll take the first watch. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mom. You ask me, that beautiful mirage is a walking nightmare. We've got to pull out of here before that's... Aye, aye. What's going on here? All right. 
right, where is she? Where's who? Where's Mabel, that's who? A food pack's missing! Captain Storm, sir! Captain Storm! One of the pack animals with food is missing, sir. The halt is still here. Only Mabel was in it when he relieved me. What happened, Smollett? Oh, I don't know, sir. I never closed my eyes. I didn't see anything happen, sir. I didn't see a soul or anything anywhere. Maybe it was tied over here. Yes, sir. Don't it strike you as kind of odd, sir? She refuses our water and food. And now some of our food's missing. And so is Mabel. Doesn't make sense. She could have broken loose during the night and wandered off without smarter hearing. The wind could have covered the tracks with sand. I don't know, sir. I could believe it with Harry or Josephine, but not Mabel, sir. She ain't the wandering type, she ain't. We have a long way to go. How long do you think you can keep this up? I'll be a good girl and ride one of the mules. I do not tire, Captain. The desert is my strength. You had better keep the animals for yourselves. We got the water, Sergeant. Yes, sir. waiting for you. You better start getting used to that idea. But I filled it this morning before we left the water off. Oh, you never close your eyes, you don't. You don't see anything happen. Not a soul, not a thing anywhere. So the food goes and Mabel goes with it. Now the water's gone and your brain's gone with it. Captain Storm, sir! Water's gone, sir. Smollett says he filled it this morning. But this skin is empty. Bone dry! Makes sense. This water hole's been a stop for every patrol that's ever passed through this area. So I don't like it. I think the girl's fair gone crackers. She says we've been tailing off in the wrong direction for over two days now. She says that if we go on according to the map, we're going to get find ourselves. Listen, you. Stop telling my men where we're going or how to get there. Anything you've got to say, you tell me. Please, Captain. If you do not go my way, it will be too late. We follow the map. Thank you. 
something stunned me. Oh. Get the medical kit. Right. And bring that girl. She can help. Smell it. Hurry up. The, the medical kit is missing, sir. So is that girl. Here, keep this blade in the fire. It's just embers, sir. I don't think it's hot enough. Hold on. And get some rest. Captain Storm, sir! Where have you been? I went the short way and reached the pass. We may not be able to go on. Scorpion got Mrs. Quentin. She's had a rough time. How can you stay? There was no food, no water. There's a water hole about a half a day's ride from here. I'll send one of the men. If there's still poison in her, she may die by then, even if water is to be found. Oh. 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 She needs help, Captain. Now. The pass is clear. There would still be time for her. Sir. Yeah. If you'll excuse my saying so, sir, I don't trust her. I'd rather take my chances following the map. Or getting my bones bleached trying to make it back to the post. If she acts pretty sick, sir. I don't think she'll make it your way. I don't feel like playing a dead ear, sir, but... Oh. Yeah. If this is a trap, it's going to be you first, then us. Yes, Captain. seek to disturb the eternal peace and sleep of the high priest? Beware, flesh of my flesh shall creep into thy body and eat of the flesh of thy spirit until such time as ye shall return into the pit of everlasting darkness whence she lived before life. All right, let's cut it open. Robert! I'm not a superstitious man, but uh, I feel a wee bit strange about desecrating this tomb. I'd say, let it be. Right. It is what we came for, nicht wahr? Beauchamp. What does it matter what I think, Robert? You'll do what you want anyway. And Faraday, what's your opinion? Well, as a doctor, as a man of science, my knowledge is limited to things physiological. I'm afraid superstition's out of my field. Ancient resting grounds. What's the matter? 
We are too late. There's no chance to help now. It is too late. Give me a hand, right? Let it be. Let it be. Forty centuries of a lost past lie here. Millions of blocks of stone. Every stone, the heartbreak and lifetime of a slave. And for us, years of diggings, research, failures. And now when we're so close, on the very brink of a tremendous discovery, you say, let it be. Brecht. I'm sorry, Mr. Quentin. I know your feelings. But tomorrow we seal up the tomb, and that's final. Final with you, Captain. As soon as Dr. Faraday says your wife can travel, we head back to Cairo. Oh, yes. I didn't thank you for saving her life. Well, at least you've served one purpose. I'll be sure and put in a good word to your commanding officer. We're both tired, Quentin. Good night. What's the captain's problem? Me? They got orders to call off the expedition, bring us back. What are you going to do about it? How's Sylvia? I cauterized the wound. She's suffering mostly from physical exhaustion. Uh, and the boy? Nothing serious. Slight traumatic shock. His sister's with him now. Good night's sleep. He'll be fine. All right to see Sylvia now? Yes, sir. Good night, Faraday. Good night. Hello, Sylvia. Are you feeling more comfortable now? Yes, thanks. With all the excitement, we two seem to have gotten lost. But I knew you'd change your mind and come. It wouldn't have been the same without you. I'm so close, Sylvia, so close, and I've waited so long. I'm glad for you, Robert. But I need time, and you're the only one who can give it to me. Now, our leaving depends on you. As long as you stay sick, Storm is forced to stay here. Robert. And the longer he stays, the better my chances of finding Rahateb. Robert, listen to me for a minute. Do you understand what I'm saying? The longer you stay sick... Robert, what I've got to say can't wait. I've got to tell you now. You've got to tell me what? That I haven't come back to you. This was something I couldn't tell you in a letter or, or send word about. I can't go on this way any longer. Well, is this something that just happened, or has it been coming on for a long time? I've tried hard not to let it. I've tried so hard to make our lives work, you must believe that. But everything I've done has been for you. I've wanted to give you the world. You've been so much a, a, a close part of my life, Sylvia. You know how much I need you. No. You don't really need me, Robert. You've never really needed me. I don't want the world. I just want the man I thought I once married. That can never be again. I, I know that now. I feel like a, a, a piece of baggage. Something shipped from one corner of the earth to the other. 
without any roots, anywhere, any place. I don't know what it is to be a woman anymore. You don't. And what were you before I married you? Some starry-eyed, mousy little librarian in a museum. What did you know then? Books and catalogs and files. And who took you away from all that? Took you to all the places and showed you the things that you'd read about and then cataloged and filed away. You did. But you didn't do it for me. You did it for yourself. You tried to make me into something that you wanted me to be. Something for your own ego and satisfaction. Something to show off to anyone who would look and admire so, so you could say, see what I've done. See what I've made. You never cared about me or my feelings or what I wanted to be. It took me all this time to find out. Who helped you find out? The captain? My daily diary, Robert. And someday, perhaps, who knows, to become your memoirs. Fully illustrated. My greatest discovery by Robert Quentin. Personally autographed, it should sell thousands of copies that just let your holes alone. <laughs> to the glory of man and humanity, Robert. You. Keep that up, Beauchamp, and your brain will turn into a sponge. Oof, no loss to the world. It has already had its Gauguins, its Van Goghs, its Rabelais and Victor Hugos. My contribution to the world is you. Correct. Where are you coming with that cartouche? Ah, it is slow, very slow. And can't you hurry it up? One cannot undo in one night. But it's taken 3,000 years to fall. But we know there is something here. It looks as though it might be the beginning of a letter from Rahateb to his high priest. Rahateb's royal seal. And when you look over here, this might also be the character of Bubasti, the cat goddess whom they worship. Well, of course, we'll know a great deal more as soon as Brecht cleans the rest of it away. The tomb must be here. The tomb is here. The king is dead. Long live the king. Breton? Quentin, it's Storm. I want to talk to you. Quentin! I gave orders for nobody to come back into this tomb, Breton. Somebody did. Take a look. 
You were here just after the boy fainted, Storm. You went back up with us. The mummy was here when we left. No one has been down here since. Except you, Quentin. Where'd you put it? You tell me. But something was here, Storm. Take a look at those tracks. Doesn't make sense. Somebody could have worn foot coverings to make those impressions. These ancient tombs are full of hidden openings. You said the boy collapsed the moment Faraday made that first incision into the mummy wrappings. That's right. On the way here, his sister kept saying how we had to hurry or we'd be too late. How'd you happen to get him as a guide? and then a sudden stop and no beat at all. I don't know how he's alive, but that face and that scar, I never noticed that before. Scar? Well, he was bleeding when I brought him into the tent. There's no mistake in the change. Look at his hair, streaked with gray. Yes. Look at his teeth. The rapid acceleration of the aging process, 50 years in a matter of hours. There's nothing in any of the medical books on this one. Belongs in a hospital, Robert. Can't be treated here. We've got to get him back to Cairo. That's exactly where he's going. Not if he can be made to talk. Not if you can open his mind, Faraday. See that he's ready to travel in the morning. Yes, Captain. Storm! Do you know what it means if we turn back now? Do you know what we stand to lose? A man's life, Quentin. Oh, okay, boys. Look at here. Yeah, you see if we can define define these hieroglyphs, we might just be able to do some things in the back room with one of our mummies. What do you think? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, hello. And uh, yes, <laughs> welcome back to the uh, to this portion of the show. <laughs> it got me engrossed here in the uh, Egyptian Book of the Dead, and. Uh, you know, it's it's um, this is featured heavily and in, in throughout many 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 uh, Egyptian mummy movies, especially the mummy with uh, Karloff. And speaking of Karloff, as you can see here, I have finished my The Mummy from 1931, featuring Karloff himself as Imhotep, the mummy inside the sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. And it took me about four months to put this together. I felt just like an Egyptologist. Egyptologist? Yes. And uh, someone who studies Egypt and, uh, and a little bit of paleontology as well. I was digging it around in archaeology and all those other ologies. I like monsterology better, right, Boris? <laughs> anyway, this is just one of the many models that we have dedicated to Karloff and to the mummy genre. We also have wonderful little trinket boxes which is shaped like a sarcophagus and it's got a nice little hidey hole place inside of it that uh, so that uh, people can keep keep their wares or their secrets especially huh nice little ink pen of the Egyptians with Egyptian symbols and pictures well that's cool we'll keep that in there in case I need to uh, 
to, to case we need to uh, do hieroglyphs later. Right, Boris? <laughs> you never know what you're going to learn here at Monster Movie Night. Right, Boris? Right? Well, anyway, hope you're enjoying the film so far. There's more to come, so let's go to The Pharaoh's Curse. deflated. Drained of all its blood. Gromley, what did you see? What kind of an animal was it? Animal, sir? It was no animal. It was him, in there. Flesh of my flesh shall crawl into thy body and eat of the flesh of thy soul. I want to know what happened, how he got out. I said it was too late. Is that all she can say? Forget it. You're not to leave your tent. We'll search every inch of that tomb. I'd like Brecht and Andrews to stay here. They're deciphering a cartouche. It might be important. All right. I heard shots and awakened. I thought... There may be trouble, Mrs. Quentin. I'd like you to remain in your tent. I'll post Smollett outside. I'll save you the trouble of asking, Captain. She came up here to tell me our marriage was over. I thought you and my wife became better acquainted. Quentin Luck, miraculous, or is it fate? If you had deliberately planned things that could not have worked out better, you needed time, you got time.
is here. He got Gromley. The same thing that happened to the animal. Absolutely drained. Look here. This must be the vein he used. Completely collapsed. The whole body eviscerated. Well, that takes care of my appetite. But, but I still want to know why he goes after blood. We, we have made a translation. I, it's a letter from Rahatib, instructing his high priest to make arrangements for his funeral in this cliff tomb after his death as a precaution against grave robbers. When the king dies, the high priest is to take his own life and then be laid to rest where his soul can guard the king. And thy soul shall enter into the mortal body and possess its spirit to do thy bidding. Ye shall still the fires that seek to destroy and gain thy strength from the blood of the living until the last intruder shall be no more. Are you asking me to believe that a, a man who has been dead 3,000 years has the power to transfer his soul into the body of another human being? No, I'm not asking you to believe anything, Captain. I merely read the cartouche. But one thing, something over which we had no control did happen the instant that Faraday's scalpel cut into those wrappings. You, Faraday, you're a doctor. Well, you can fight known things, but... I don't know how to fight the unknown. How do you explain the missing mummy? The strange condition of the animal, the death of your own sergeant here, and the cat tracks in the high priest chamber. I say we find the royal tomb and we find the answer. I'm going to surprise you, Quentin. I say we do too. You shouldn't be out here alone. I told you to keep to your tent. I was so restless. I... Why don't we leave now? We can't leave. Not until we find the answer. It isn't worth finding. I don't think I want to know the truth. I have to. One of my men has been murdered. Why didn't you tell me the real reason you came out here? I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to face him. That I wouldn't have the courage to tell him. I guess I was too scared that the Quentin charm would twist me around. I just... But you're the one who said it, Captain. Said what? To each his own. Let the past be in the past and the mummies lie in their tombs. Remember? Truth, Captain. Truce. I had not touche. <laughs> trying to break through that wall for hours. Are you sure you made the correct translation? The clues are vague. I can only guess. After all, I didn't write the cartouche.
I think it's a room. Throw me a torch. Filled with massive blocks of stone. The end of it's a flight of stairs. Where do they lead? Dead end. Turning into dust. Without blood, the whole process becomes more rapid. Samira, if you know where your brother is, you must tell us. He's got to be stopped. Save from himself. All right. Here's what's happening. Not very pretty, is it? This isn't a man anymore. Your own brother. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Try to warn. Try to help. You would not listen. Now, unless you leave us alone, it will be too late for all of you. Take it back to your tent. Right. What now, mon capitaine? To live, it has to have blood. That means one of us again. Very simple. We get him first. A 
Dor Numar went through. The tomb could be in there. Could be a tomb, a trap, or another dead end. Well, this time we're going to find out. Captain. Captain. I'm beginning to think she was right. That it is too late for all of us. You won't stop. You won't leave. Don't you think I want to? You think I like fighting something I can't even see? Only who might be killed next? I can't go back. I can't stop now. It's only me, Smollett. Oh. Here you are. Pull yourself together. Where are they? Where, Where are, are they? they? Come on. Come on now. Be off. Oh. Come on. There you are. Oh. Sylvia, what happened? It was horrible. Well, what was? Take me away from here. Take All me right, away. All right, now calm down. Calm down. Come on with me. What happened? I don't know yet. What is it? It was outside my tent. I heard a scratching sound. I looked over and saw a shadow. And then it began to move around to the entrance. But it wasn't just an ordinary shadow. It was like a... It was like... Like a what? Like that, like a cat. Moving slowly. And then it got around to the entrance. And suddenly, she was standing there. Samira? And the way she looked at me. Sylvia, are you sure this shadow wasn't just your imagination? It wasn't my imagination. I saw it. Were the claw marks on Breck's face anybody's imagination? Where is she now? 
I don't know. She was in my tent and I ran out. Andrews. Let them go. What's the matter, Robert? I want to know where the tomb is, Andrews. You've known ever since you've deciphered the cartouche. I kept telling you to let things be. But you'd not believe me, would you? You didn't think I'd come this far and ever turn back. I've waited too long, Andrews. I'm getting what I came for. You're going to tell me. And you're going to tell me now. You never could face failure, could you, Robin? I won't face failure. I'm going to be the first man to walk into that tomb. The first man to make the discovery. Go on. Go on, Andrews. Now, how does it open, Andrews? Tell me! Did you hear me? I said, tell me how it opens! You've gone. Beyond me, sir. Andrews, Quentin, where are they? Well, they started up with us from the tomb. Came out of the side of the royal tomb, started for us. Robert went after him, into the tomb of Rahatab. The door closed with a, it was a trap. The entrance is just tons of stone. I tried stone. I tried. Take care of it. Yes, of course. Better wait here. It was never Robert's fate that he should meet a peaceful death. There's nothing any of us can do here anymore, Beauchamp. I'll tell Mrs. Quentin. A long sleep among kings, mon ami. Adieu. Sorry it had to end this way, Sylvia. If there is anything I can do... Thanks, Claude. Andrews? 
Captain Storm. Across the desert with us to protect the secret of his king. And it did not fail. Anders, do you know what you're saying? After death, new life in another form, in another body. And the soul will go on to exist eternally. If you will let yourself believe there is such a thing as reincarnation. Well, then, Samira, his sister, she knew. Then she must... Bobasti, the cat goddess. Where did she go? Whatever thoughts you have, keep them. For the outside world, for the official record, this tomb was not entered. As for what happened to the others... Deaths due to natural causes. Close the coffin, Sergeant. Salam, Sarge. Ah. I know it is empty earth here, but somehow this gives me a better feeling. Sylvia, one thing. Robert was never afraid. At least I'm grateful to him for having taught me that. Cruelties of life, Faraday. I possess the most fabulous story, but only Quentin could have told it and been believed. Should I tell it? They would only point at their heads and say, hmm, poor fellow, a doctor he needs for his head. Good boy, good boy. That's okay. Good boy, good boy, good girl, good, good woofy, good woofy. Okay, okay, okay. Let's wrap it up. I know you. I know it's a okay. It's a howling good film. I know that. You through? Thank you. Yes, indeed. Woofy there just loves this film. He's says it's a howling success, you know, because he likes the uh, the uh, jackal dogs in a lot of these mummy films, you know, it goes along with Anubis and that type of thing. You know, you got cats, you got dogs. The ancient old story between, you know, struggles between those two particular species, right, Boris? Of course, you don't have that problem, do you? No? You like to eat them both, <laughs> especially if they've been over a little bit of a roadkill, hmm? <laughs> oh, my dear Boris, my dear Boris. 
Well, dear people, I hope you enjoyed tonight's feature film, The Pharaoh's Curse, made in 1957 with lots of actors that you may have not known about. But anyway, thanks to Monster Movie Night, now you're caught up, right? <laughs> well, it's that time again. We wish that you'll come back next time for another episode. And who knows what we'll be showing then, right, Boris? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Who knows? Until then, till next time, as always, keep screaming.